We would like to welcome everyone today. I know we have some uh, visitors that are with family today, and we welcome you. And we welcome you if you are online. In September, we'll be having two guest speakers. The first one is Dawn, Dr. Dawn Edwards Morton on September 11th. Dawn's going to share a testimony with us and share about Operation Christmas Child. And then on the 18th, Evangelist Jim Montgomery will be here, and we will take up a love offering for Jim. Today you received a handout, so that is our next Outreach is the Walk for the Pregnancy Center, which will be on Saturday, September the 17th. You will notice on the back of your handout, it shows how if we all do a little, it just adds up to a lot. And I always like that pyramid because I think sometimes when maybe at this point in life you can't give a whole lot, it shows if you give what you can that it helps to make a good total in the end. So Carol Jividen will be at the information table after church. If you want to simply hand her cash or give her a check, you can check in with her. We usually have one person to sign up with for New Hope. So you can also give online if you want to. I thought maybe I would do that, but then I saw that it cost me $375 to do that transaction, and I thought, I'll just give it church. Save a little money for the kingdom. So the walk is a simple walk around the park. Um, in Bowling Green, lunch is available there. There's fun things for the kids, a bounce house, outside games. Last year was a very beautiful day just to hang out in the park and fellowship with others who support the Pregnancy Center. Our just, just our um, coming encourages the Pregnancy Center. If you're in ministry, when people show up, it sure makes it, it seems like it makes it a lot more fun, okay? So Danny Gundy, Mike McDonald, and Pastor Ron helped out with an outreach project yesterday, and I'll let Pastor Ron tell you all about that. So just to keep you in touch with what's happening with LifeWise Academy at Elmwood, the starting date is September the 12th, and already there are 92 children that are registered for classes. And the pattern has been that once LifeWise starts, that the kids encourage other kids to come to Children are great evangelists. They have no problem inviting their friends. So we'll give you a little update on that once in a while, just what's going on. Yeah, yesterday we went over to Scrap, and uh, there's a, a group out of Iowa that make grain bins, and they um, have these available. And a friend who went with us, Kentucky Missions, anyway, he went and got a grain bin. They're setting it up over at Scrap. So yesterday, Danny and and Mike and I went over and uh, helped them set up. We set up first couple rows of the grain bin, and they're going to put it together. It's emergency housing for people to live in a grain bin. Um, it's about 18 foot. We should have had Jim. He should have been with us. Jim used to sell them and put them up. I thought about you when we were doing this. It was not like you used to do, trust me. But, um, but anyway, it's uh, emergency housing. They've used them in Haiti, and uh, it's just it's kind of interesting. And so anyway, that's what we did yesterday. Um, if the ushers have come forward, we're going to take up our offering. Um, keep in prayer. Uh, oh, thanks for Landon's here today. Landon came through his back surgery. Everything went well, and he's recuperating, so we're thankful for that. Um, Rachel says her grandmother has been diagnosed with cancer, so we're going to pray for her. And uh, um, Gwen England's daughter, Robin, is having a bone marrow transplant Friday, so we want to keep her in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. We thank you, Lord, for this day when we can gather together. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful weather today. Lord, we just pray that you just continue to touch land and continue healing in his body and his back. Lord, just thank you for watching over him through this surgery and that everything went well. Lord, we pray for Rachel's grandmother. We pray that you just touch her body and, Lord, just heal her and, and just uh, help her to look to you and to trust you through this time. Lord, we pray for Robin as she has this bone marrow transplant on Friday. Lord, I just pray that you just guide the doctors and, Lord, just help them to do everything they need to do. And then we just pray that uh, you just touch and heal her body. Lord, just help her her bones to just uh, produce the marrow that they're supposed to. And, and Lord, just help her to heal and to get back to normal. 
Lord, we just thank you for your love for us and for caring for us and for watching over us and for your blessings, Lord. We thank you for providing for us. So, Lord, just receive our offering now, a part of what you've blessed us with. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today and for maybe a couple of weeks, I'm not sure, maybe next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share about worship. I want to just today kind of think about why do we worship? You know, why, why do we worship? Why do we worship? Well, you know, the reason we worship is to honor and adore God. You know, we worship Him. We put Him in His rightful place. We recognize who He is. And when we worship, we tell Him that we love Him. You know, it's our worship is our expression to Him for who He is. And it's directed towards Him. It's directed towards Him. And, you know, worship is not something that, you know, we do for us. Sometimes I think we think, well, it's for us. But, you know, I, now, is there benefits for us when we worship him? Absolutely. Absolutely. It benefits us, you know. But that's not why we do it. That's not why we do it. The first thing I want to look at is the fact that worship comes from the heart. I want to start in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, the fourth to the in the fifth verse it says, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. We love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and all of our strength. When we worship, we tell Him we love Him, and it comes from our heart." It comes from our heart. Now I want to contrast that with something in Matthew, in Matthew the fifth chapter, the fifteenth chapter, the uh, eighth verse. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and he said these words. He called them hypocrites. And he said, uh, these people draw near to me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So he says, they draw near with their mouth. They draw near with their words. They say the right thing. They honor me. They don't honor me with their, they honor me with their lips. You know, they, 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 it looks good. But he said, there's a problem. He says, their heart is far from me. So that gives us a picture that we can say the right things, say the right words, but our heart's in the wrong place. And then he goes on to say, in vain they worship me. Their worship is vain. Their worship, their worship is for naught. Think about that. And they thought they were doing the right thing. They thought because they were saying what they considered the right words, and they probably were, and they were saying what everybody thought they should, but their heart was far from him. And so Jesus called them hypocrites, people who are faking it, you know. Sometimes we have to be very careful that we're not, we're not trying to fake it. You know, we're not trying to uh, fool somebody. You know, one thing about God, we can't fool him. We may, we may think we can fool people, and you can fool people some of the time. What is that? But you can't fool all the people all the time. But, you know, you can, you can go through the motions, and, and that's one of the dangers of, I think, sometimes coming to church. The danger is that people can sit here, and, you know, if you come a while, you can learn kind of the ritual. You can learn the pattern. Every church has a different one. But you learn kind of the pattern, so you kind of do what everybody else is doing. And, you know, so then the assumption is, if I do what everybody else is doing, I must be okay. You know, like, well, somehow I can at least fake my way through it. But the reality is that God knows our heart. He knows our heart. He knows, he knows what's on the inside of us. In, uh, in Psalms, in Psalm 57, verse 7,
David said, My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. So David, he said, he's talking about his heart. He says, My heart is steadfast. What does that mean? It says steadfast. It's fixed. My heart is determined. This is what I will do. My heart is determined. You know, not, not my head. You know, sometimes your head isn't determined like your heart is. You know, sometimes my head's in another place. Sometimes my head is thinking different things. But David said, my heart is fixed. My heart is determined. And he says, because of that, I will sing and give praise. I will sing and, and give praise. So what he's saying is, you know, it has to start within us. It has to start within us. My heart is determined. My heart is fixed. It comes from in here. You know, this is where worship comes from. Jesus, when he was talking about worship, he was uh, sharing with a lady uh, at the well, and he was talking to her, and, and in their conversation, he said these words in John 4, 23. He says, the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers are going to worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. True worshipers. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. He says, the time has come for true worshipers to worship the Father. And how do they do that? They worship in spirit and in truth. We have to start to realize that worship is a spiritual effort on our part. It comes from the heart. comes from our inner being. We worship out of our spirit, not our natural man. Do you know that your natural man doesn't always want to worship? You know, your natural man might have said, well, I don't feel like going to church today. Or when you got here, you said, I don't want to sing today. You know, and I'll, let me just say this. And if your natural man says you don't want to sing, the last thing you want is somebody singing beside you. Did you ever notice that? <laughs> you know, did you ever notice when you, if you're having a bad day and somebody else is happy? Did that just really kind of upset you? You know, what are they so happy about? You know, but it's funny. Well, the point being that we worship out of our inner being. We worship out of our spirit because God is a spirit. And so we worship out of our spirit. Worship is spiritual. It comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. You know, we sing to worship him, to adore him, to honor him, to love him. And it comes from our heart. It comes from our heart. In Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 20th verse, Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Now, you know, worship... Two or three just really feels funny sometimes. I don't know about you. And I'll, maybe if you had two or three people that could really sing. But, you know, if I sit down with two or three people, we're going to really struggle to sing. I mean, that's, you know, now, doesn't mean we can't worship. You know, doesn't mean we can't worship. You know, but it's going to be different. It's going to be different. Two or three is going to be different. I don't know if you've ever been in a group of 200 200 is different than two or three. Okay. Now, have you ever been in a group of 1,000? It gets like, wow, this is different. What about 10,000? Well, you know, it's even bigger. But it doesn't always mean that 10,000 is better than two or three. You know, having, having, now, it's an experience. When you get believers together, it, it, it's a different, you know, it's not different, but it's, it's bigger, it's fuller. But just because there's 10,000 doesn't make it more worship than two or three. That's, right. That's hard for us in our, in our minds sometimes to kind of work around. Because I've heard people say, wow, that was really great, man, that worship, I've never, I've never had been in anything like that before. Or that's the best worship I've ever been in. Well, I don't know if it is or not. If two or three, Jesus is present, why is 10,000 better than two or three? Well, it sounded better. Well, I can give you that. It's going to sound different. You know, but 
we have to remember what worship is all about. It comes from the heart. Worship is not a feeling. No. Worship is not a feeling. Yeah. Well, I didn't feel like it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you feel like. Right. You know, you, you rise above your feelings. You rise above how you feel. Because worship comes from the heart. Do we always feel like you know? You know, I don't always feel like coming to church. If I, you know, I guess if I looked at my feelings, you know, there's mornings when I probably, if I've thought about it very long, I can say, well, you know, I I feel like just laying here. I I don't I don't feel like getting up. You know. Now, to be honest, just so you don't think that I go through this a lot. I hardly ever have that thought. But I'm not saying, you know, that there aren't those feelings, you know. You know. But some of us, you know, we, we say, well, I don't feel like. Or, or we leave church, we say, well, I don't know, I just didn't feel the same. Maybe it's not about your feelings. Just, just to throw that out there. Because if we worship from our spirit, then my feelings really don't matter. Now, does worship give us feelings? Does it affect our feelings? Yes, it can. It can. It can build us up, encourage us. You know, it can. I've had people say to me, well, you know, if I don't go to church, it just kind of, my week's all messed up. Now, I don't know if that means it's a good omen. I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm never sure exactly what that means. You know? I'm not sure... I'm not sure, I mean, I, I think it's meant to encourage us, don't get me wrong, but I don't know that the total purpose of church is to make me feel good to have a good week. That maybe there's a possibility that it's not all about me. Amen. Just a possibility. Yeah. That it's not just about me and what I think and how I feel. And how did that make me feel? I didn't like this or that. So, you know, we don't have to feel good to worship. Matter of fact, I think some of the times when it's most important is when we don't feel good. Yes. You know, David said, why are you so upset, oh, my soul? Mm -hmm. You know, he, look, he talked to himself. He says, hey, what's wrong with you? Why are you so down? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's worship. Let's, let's get it together. You know, let's change our focus. You know, we, we worship, especially, especially sometimes when we don't feel like it. And I don't worship because I'm, I am worthy. Amen. Well, I don't feel good enough. People say to me, well, I don't think I'm good enough to go to church. You know, the reality is when we're not good is when we should go. Jesus came for the sinners. So it's not a matter of being worthy. Amen. You know, like, so at what point would you be good enough to come into the presence of the Lord? Well, we would never get to that point. So, you know, worship isn't about me being good enough, but it's because he is worthy. Because he is worthy. I put my focus on him and not on me. In Hebrews, the, thir the 10th chapter the 19th verse. It says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, that, you know, we have a new and living way. We got boldness to come. Why? We got boldness to come by the blood of Jesus. He makes us worthy. He makes us worthy. So our worth is not based on me or you. Our worth isn't based upon what we've done. It's based upon who he is yeah. and what he has done. So we come by a new and living way. And, and it goes on to say, in having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So we draw near to God with a pure heart because of what he has done for us. 
Your heart's only pure because Jesus shed his blood and died on a cross to save you. Amen. You're not pure because of who you are and what you've done. That's right. you're, not, you're not pure because of, of anything that makes you worthy. But he is worthy. Yes. And what difference does that make? Well, the difference is when we come knowing he's worthy, then we worship him because of what he's done and because he's worthy, I'm not. So my focus is on him, the one who makes us worthy, mm -hmm. the one that we look to and the one that we trust. So our, when we worship, our focus shifts from me to him, from me to him. I keep my focus on him. I don't look to other people. I don't, I don't look to others. I don't focus on myself. Either one of those will get you in trouble if you come to worship. Mm -hmm. You know? If you look at other people, you're going to get messed up. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to say, well, what are they doing? Why aren't they this? Or what are they doing that? And you're going to start watching people. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get your eyes off of the Lord. The other thing is, if you focus on yourself, that's all you're going to think about. Oh my, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard day. You can have a hard day and still worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully you get your focus off of yourself. Yes. Not that you don't have hard days. I'm not saying we don't have hard days. I'm just saying when you have a hard day, get your focus off of yourself. Start to look to him. When we worship, we got to be careful not to get caught up in our surroundings. You know, to start looking at what's going on around us. If you do, you're going to have trouble worshiping. You're going to have trouble. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. One of my biggest things as a pastor, you know, one of the big reasons I sit up front is because I don't want to sit in the back and watch you from behind. You know, as a pastor, if I sit and watch you from behind, I'm going to scrutinize what everybody's doing. And if you're acting abnormal, I'm going to worry that something's wrong with you. See, I'm going to sit there and go, well, you know, they always kind of smile. But they're not very happy. What's wrong with them? Wow, well, boy, I wonder. And I'm going to sit there and get all worked up about everybody else. Now, when I'm up front, I don't see what you're all doing or how you're feeling or what you're going through. So it's not affecting my worship. Amen. You know? Now, I can care later. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't care. I'm saying when I worship, I have to get my focus off myself and other people. Or I'm going to have a hard time worshiping. Maybe sometimes it's good to close your eyes. You know, sometimes maybe it's just good to close your eyes. Or if that helps you, it's good to close your eyes. But when we worship, we focus on Him. And when we do, when we focus on him is, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again, but we make him bigger. Amen. We make him bigger. In uh, Proverbs, the 34th chapter, the third verse, David says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Magnify the Lord. Let's make the Lord bigger. Amen. Oh, come, let us make the Lord bigger. Let us worship him. Let us worship him. You know, let's make him bigger in our life. Let's let how I feel and think get smaller. I make him bigger and what he says, and I make how I think and feel smaller. Amen. I get more in line with his word and what he says. Mm -hmm. You know, not what I think, not what I'm going through. Not that it's not real. I'm not saying pretend it's not there. But I'm saying in the midst of whatever you're going through, my advice is we magnify the Lord together. One of the reasons I believe that Christians come together is because sometimes we need somebody else to encourage us to magnify the Lord. You know, if I'm having a hard time and I'm struggling and I stay home, there's nobody there to encourage me. And the chances are, on my own, I'm not saying impossible, but the chances are on my own, I don't magnify the Lord. Chances are most of us left to ourselves and on our own will magnify our problems. 
or magnify whatever's going on and we'll have trouble making the Lord bigger. We'll have trouble magnifying Him. You know, what God says about the situation always needs to get bigger. My problem, my feelings, how I see it needs to get smaller. Yes. Needs to get smaller. So that's part of the, one of the main reasons we worship is to magnify him. You know, who he is, what he does. To remember what he's done in the past. To remember what he's done to other people in the past, David and Moses and, and you know, and ourselves. Remember what God has done. And we magnify him and we worship him for that. We get our focus on him and not on our situations. In Isaiah, the 55th chapter, the 8th and 9th verse, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So I worship him because he's got a better idea. God's got a better plan. You know, I worship him for who he is. For who he is. And I realize that his plan and his ways are better than mine that my thoughts to him are putting him in his rightful place of who he says he is. He's the king of kings. King of kings. Think about that. King of kings. King of rulers. King of presidents. King of governors. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's my Lord. He's the Lord of my life. He's the Lord of my life. He's my redeemer. He's the one that makes me right. You know, he redeems me from my situation. You know, he wants to change things and make them better. He wants to redeem them. He's my healer. He's my provider. So for who he is, I now worship him. Sometimes we worship him dependent upon who we think he is. You know, I believe the more we realize who he really is, the more we can't help but worship him. We worship him. And we worship him from our heart. From our heart. It comes out of our innermost being. You know, remember he said, I'm, I'm fixed. I'm steadfast. You know, it's what I want to do. It's my heart's desire to worship you. And I worship him from my inner being, my real me. The real me. You know, it's not just singing songs. No. You know, anybody can sing a song. Mm -hmm. Some songs are worship, some aren't. Some aren't. Singing doesn't make worship. No. You know, it's what comes out of our heart. It's what comes out of our heart. To tell God who he is to acknowledge who he is, to honor him, to show him respect and love for who he is. You know, it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Remember David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, help me to have a clean heart towards you, a right spirit towards you. Help me to worship you for who you are. And then, uh, and then when we worship him, you know, and I'm going to talk about that probably more next week, but we also worship him with how we live. Mm -hmm. yeah. Worship is not just a f half an hour on Sunday morning. Right. If it is, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, we worship him with our lives. Mm -hmm. We worship him with who we are mm -hmm. and how we live. And so worship needs to then be a reflection on my life because it comes out of my spirit. It's who I really am. It's who I really am. So as we worship, as we worship him, remember, you know, it comes from our hearts. And God sees our hearts. You know, God sees our hearts. So as we worship, he knows what's going on, you know, 
And so we worship him from our very being, who we are. We don't try to be like anybody else, you know. We don't, we don't try to do what somebody else does. But we worship him from our being, for who we are. We're his child. Amen. We're his child. Hallelujah. The child. He's our father. Mm. And so out of that relationship, we come and we worship him. You know, sometimes maybe we make it too difficult. You know, maybe we, we try to do more than we need to. You know, sometimes maybe we just need to express our heart to him and keep it, keep it simple. Keep it true. Keep it from our being who we really are. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for who you are, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, we thank you. You're the Lord of our life if we allow you to. Lord, if you, we allow you to be the Lord, you're the Lord of our life. You want to be in charge. And Lord, we surrender our will to you. And so Lord, remind us as we worship, when we come, Lord, that we would come together and keep our eyes on you. Lord, that our focus is on you and who you are. Lord, we just thank you for that. Hallelujah. We thank you for being able now to live our lives believing and acting like who you are. Mm -hmm. Lord, that you're the King of Kings and you're the Lord of Lords tomorrow too. Thank you. Not just today, mm -hmm. but tomorrow too. Amen. So Lord, just help us to be faithful to you. Lord, help us to be steadfast, fixed, determined, yes. unmovable yes. as we worship and honor you. And we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.